Good afternoon. You're watching Audio Tree Live. The date is Thursday, June 2nd. We are so pleased to have with us live in the studio, Ben Sully. Settle down. Ooh, settle down. Take it. Take it easy. Sometimes I feel like an arrow Fighting something somewhere long ago Whether it moved or I missed where I'm bound I don't yet know 
But if you see me coming, no, oh, I'll probably pass you by on my way to something, somewhere, sometime. Sometimes I find myself reeling, listening and rolling in a plastic sea. The signs and signals bidding for attention from me. So turn on your city, oh, and I will turn on mine. And we'll hum and go like something, somewhere, sometime. Yes, and if I wounded you, I'm sorry. I had good intention, yes. And if I wounded you, I'm sorry, Lord. Cause it happens all the time. Yeah, yeah. You remind me of a reason. How about some so many years ago to sing words through eyes and build highways from coast to coast but those words fell short on your roads have worn the time on our way to something somewhere sometime yes and if I wounded you I'm sorry I had good intentions Ben Sully. Thanks for being here, guys. That's a pleasure. Thank you. Definitely. Um, your primary instrument is cello, obviously. It's true. Yet you also have a bass player. Mm -hmm. uh, two very low, low instruments. I know cello. I'm not a cello player, but I know it's used a lot in the bass cleft. So when you write bass lines with cello lines, is there ever a challenge of just figuring out how to get them to do different things? Um, maybe a little bit. I mean, uh, the cello has been used orchestrally for a long time as like the Swiss Army knife of the orchestra. Mm -hmm. So you can use it for that really low, like... But you've also got great harmony, and you've got great rhythm. Yeah. So I think that um, as a songwriting instrument, it's been a really versatile tool for me to have. And when I sit down with Andre here playing bass, it's, uh, it's a treat because he's got a really good touch because he's also classically trained on upright bass. So oh, we, nice. we, ha we actually have a nice way of kind of feathering our entrances together and... Um, I don't think we're scared of too much low end in this band. We just really, <laughs> we just really love it. I mean, it's a new thing to be able to have this much low end and be able to communicate it because, you know, in the past, it's really hard to communicate low end. But with today's technology, we can plug in some earphones and have the sound of elephants in our ears. Yeah, definitely. Did you coin the term the Swiss Army Knife of the orchestra before cello? Uh, I don't think, I don't know. I, I feel that's like just how I think of it because I grew up with on, Mac on MacGyver. So I was like, <laughs> if I'm going to be a cellist, I'm going to be MacGyver as a cellist because I always find myself in weird musical situations. Yeah, I wonder if uh, the guy who played MacGyver, I don't know his name, unfortunately. I, I, if, I don't either. Yeah. Does anyone, do any of you guys know the actor who played MacGyver's name? Pop quiz. Yeah. <laughs> no. We're being really bad MacGyvers right now. But um, I wonder if he, uh, yeah, I wonder if he is a musician at all or plays the cello or anything like that. Uh, if he does, we should start a band. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He probably has all sorts of stuff going on inside his instrument. Oh, know? I sure hope so. Yeah, like yeah. a rocket launcher comes out of it. or You know, yeah. interestingly, uh, in Lucille Ball, when she auditioned for Ricky's show mm -hmm. on air on the pilot series, um, she auditioned on the cello, and she had all these crazy really? contraptions that came in out of it. you got to see it. It's amazing. She's like, got a chair that she pulls out of the back of it and all these other things. And um, I actually comes out comes to find out that my mom's mother is a ball. So me and Lucille Ball are related. Hey, there you go. And we both goof around on the cello. Yeah, exactly. So you have to, uh, you're going to have to work that into your show somehow. Also, um, I've just been told that the actor is Richard Dean Anderson from Whoa. MacGyver. Yeah. You've got like a producer in your ear. Yeah, I know. Um, it's actually him back there. He's our producer. Oh, Richard. wow. Yeah. So mullet, I, mullet and all? Mullet and all, yeah. So I made a really big mistake by not remembering our producer's name just now. Yeah. I'll well, probably get fired. Yeah. It's been nice working with you. <laughs> hey, you too. Uh, let's hear another song before I get kicked out of the building. <laughs> <laughs> okay, very good. We're going to play a tune for you that I wrote with a wayfaring stranger that I met in the subways of New York. 
fellow by the name of Morgan O'Kane. He was a banjo player on the sitting on a suitcase with a kick drum pedal attached to it. And uh, I asked him where he was from, and he said that he lived on the trains. And he had a lot of stories about living on the trains. And so when we sat down to write this song, those kind of weaved their way into the tune. It's called Captivity. One, two, one, two. The heat of my brain turns the iron bars around me to dust. Oh, but when I come to my senses, it's a winter's day and there's just a little rust. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'm walking through the revolving doors in my mind. Oh, but no matter how hard I try, I can't seem to get out the other side. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cause everywhere I look is looking back Ooh, I'm a holy man in a stained glass cathedral Oh, but when I look in the mirror All I see is cinder blocks and stainless steel Yeah, yeah, yeah And I got eight tailored suits Waiting for me when I get back home Lord, if I ever get back home, yeah, yes. Cause everywhere I look is looking back to where I'm looking when I get back to where I'm looking to go. Ooh, you can hold me captive for all these things I've done. I'm quite sure by now this ain't the only race I'm going on. She said she could never forget. The look in my eyes Oh, it's a misfortunate fortune that I'm in here But at least I'm still alive And I once knew a man who traveled by the whistle's aim It's been 40 years now And I just need someone to know my name Yeah, yeah, yeah I sprint towards freedom How else would you move that way? Ooh, but I ain't as fast as I used to be And the dogs are catching up But I'm gonna die the way So I might as well die trying Yeah, yes Cause everywhere I look is looking back To where I'm looking when I get back To where I'm looking Yes, everywhere I look is looking back To where I'm looking when I get back To where I'm looking Everywhere I look is looking back to where I'm looking when I get back to where I'm looking to go. You're watching Audio Tree Live. We're in the studio with Ben Sully. I had to look it up on the break for me just now, and it turns out Richard Dean Anderson is a composer. He's actually done the music for MacGyver, Stargate SG-1, and Atlantis Sci-Fi Lowdown, all of which are shows that he's acted in as well. So wow, I don't know what instrument he plays. I'm guessing piano or guitar, but who knows? Maybe he is a cellist also. Which uh, be- well, if he's not, yeah. you know, my number is eight. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I thought you were really gonna do it for a second. Which I, I mean, you could, you know, yeah. But then you might get some unwanted phone calls. Or- M- maybe I'm not sure my wife would feel good about that part. Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. That's definitely not a good idea. And you guys live in Kentucky, right? It's true. I was born and raised in Kentucky, and I still yet live there. And you, I read that you said you will probably be there for the rest of your life. It's true. It's yeah. a beautiful place. It's an amazing um, place to live. And, you know, looking forward in the future, um, you know, we have a lot of wonderful resources there. Mm-hmm. Um, that we Just beautiful groundwater, great farmable land. Mm-hmm. It's a good place. Well, yeah, because sustainability is also something that's near and dear to your heart, correct? Um, sustainability um, and morphing more into the concept of, like, just responsibility and just mm-hmm. kind of reckoning with, yeah. with all the kind of the exchanges that you make for being able to have what you we we all have, you know, mm-hmm. the careers that we have, the technology that we have, and so on. Totally. Well, and with being a musician, being in a touring band, uh, what are some of the things that you guys do to try and give back a little, or like you said, reckon the sort of being thankful for what you have, but also being respectful of the earth and all that stuff? Like, are there any practices you take um, just to be more environmental I mean, I think the, the most simple thing is to acknowledge that Every minute we spend out here, you know, mm-hmm. you know, bustling around in vehicles and everything, is is um, is leaving a footprint, and we better make the most of it while we're out here, and we um, and better appreciate it. Definitely. I think that's the biggest thing. I mean, there's small things you can do. There's, 
you know, making sure that we have water bottles and coffee mugs for all those times and um, just try to reduce our waste and footprint. And, and we encourage people to bike and walk to the shows, take public transit. And um, that's that seemed to help a little bit. But there's only so much you can do because, I mean, to be a musician and be this sustainable, it really means sit on your porch and drink local beer and <laughs> hang out with your friends <laughs> playing music. That's sustainable. Yeah, no, um, exactly. The, the, this is not, but mm. it is a way to make a living that I feel like is reasonably ethical. I'm not asking anyone to, to uh, you know, take a lash on the back for me or, or work for way less. You know, mm-hmm. I'm honored to work with the musicians that I've got on the road, and I'm honored to have the opportunity to do this at all. Um, and I feel like it's reasonably ethical. I would have to agree with you. And um, are all you guys Kentucky-based? Awesome. And as a music scene, what are the advantages to you of being there as opposed to somewhere like Chicago, New York, L.A.? I mean, do you enjoy how it's just a little bit more peaceful, a little bit more quiet out there? Well, I mean, being born and raised in Kentucky, obviously the pace of Kentucky mm-hmm. meets my natural pace, yeah. you know? And uh, I also don't have to run the financial race that a lot of my you know, contemporaries are running in the, some of the bigger cities, mm-hmm. which allows me to pursue other like more abstract artistic ideas. I mean, if I get really interested in something, I can go that way without great risk to my business. Definitely. Mm -hmm. Uh, Let's hear another song straight from Kentucky then, shall we? Yeah, bring it on. This one's called A Whole Lot to Give. Ever changing 
You're watching Audio Tree Live. We are in the studio with Ben Soli. Um, I don't know if this is a question for you or a question for Price, but what exactly is that keyboard <laughs> over there? It's, I, I noticed it when we were loading in, too, and I, we talked a little bit that? about it. Well, I do a lot of um, composing for film, uh -huh. as well as my our friend MacGyver. And... Um, <laughs> And so in that process, I'm not a pianist. I, I, I'm very physical in my process as a cellist. And so it's only recently that they've um, come up with the technology for interfaces that, that communicate some of the things that I've learned as a cellist. And so one of those is a Seaboard Rise. It's made by a company called Raleigh. And uh, I've been using it at home. And I was like, well, Price is here. He's a great pianist. And he can sing. And he can come up with all these patches. And so we brought it out on the road. And we've really enjoyed it. It's really brought a kind of a cinematic feel to the to the songs and yeah the line the line on that previous song remind me of something you would hear in maybe like an older movie but mixed with this kind of modern more muscular mm -hmm. instrumentation so it's well, really cool may maybe price you can just kind of show them what's different about it if you want to talk talk through what what it's capable of here yeah so basically what you have is um like you press the key like any other keyboard mm -hmm. but you can press and choose what dynamic it is based on how hard you're pressing oh uh, cool and then when you slide up you get different effects nice and you down get spacey with it then, if you want. And vibrato, Zombo which is a big thing for yeah, me. The vibrato. Man, that's super, super cool. So, yeah. I mean, <laughs> so all, all kinds of amazing all sounds, sounds, and depending on the patch, you know, it's all being run off that, off the laptop. It's really just a controller, but the the resolution of touch that you get out of it is amazing. Yeah, one especially being on tour, it's like portable more or less. So it, I'd imagine that comes in handy as well. And yeah. are you? So do you play a little bit of keys, um, just not as well as Price, obviously. I am unreasonably proficient <laughs> is that a, is that a, yeah i mean i can get by you okay, know like yeah. I, I know my way around a keyboard but i don't play gotcha so the great thing about that is it allows me to really use a lot more of my cello technique so you can plunk stuff out more or less mm -hmm. because sample libraries line. um that have you know previously recorded sounds that you know you can adapt and mold and shape like putty mm -hmm. um you know they're usually controlled through some type of keyboard instrument and not being a pianist that kind of limits their access to me, and Definitely. that opens it up more. Very cool. Um, awesome. Let's hear another song, shall we? Mm-hmm. Let's do a... This is a newer tune. It's called Pretend, and it's for all those long-time lovers out there.
You're watching Audio Tree Live. We're here in the studio with Ben Sully. Uh, you just came out with Steeples Part 2, mm -hmm. a sequel to Steeples Part 1. When you recorded Steeples Part 1, did you know it was going to be this sort of two-part project, or did that come later on? Um... I mean, I guess it was called part one, so you probably did know it was going to be two parts. Right? I think I had this idea of just sectionalizing an album mm -hmm. um, without the commitment of it being an album at some point. I mean, yeah. it could just be a chapterized book. Yeah. It, at some point, uh, it might be it might become an album. Otherwise, it's just songs that kind of fit together, and maybe there's other collections that will begin. Um, you know, I kind of started on a mixtape collection where we'd, like, take live show experiences and storytelling and start that as a collection. I mean... I think so many things have changed about how people consume music that the format of the record is really only held together by either the artistic integrity of the artist or the fact that that's what the media writes about. Mm -hmm. And as an independent artist, I really have never been very good at playing the game of what media needs to be writing about. And as a singing cellist, I've never been very good at playing the <laughs> game of like going through the music industry. So I figure uh, without many boundaries in place, I might as well just kind of do it the way that I feel it Definitely. and see what happens. And what to you are the uh, sonic, sonic, sonic commonalities uh, between the two Steeples chapters? Like what be on those sets of songs make them uh, logical choices to put together? Uh, they're they're um, songs about the kind of migration of our communities and our uh, spirituality kind of from small local towns with church steeples to, you know, big, huge, you know, very mobile communities gathered around data towers. And the songs are often kind of focused on the cello and the singing side of composition. Very cool. Uh, yeah, let's hear these last two songs then, shall we? Sure. This is a song called Forgotten from Steeples Part 1. Let me tune this cello. Sure. My grandfather was a was an old-time fiddler, and he would always cross-tune his instrument. Started doing that with the cello. Here we go. In a schoolyard nation in a playground town A young jury sends a villain down the slide He is a child in exile, weeping in the wood chips A castaway turned leader of a growing tribe Secret handshakes do declarations Scraps from our class fold in a flag It's a conflict out of context It's a coffee-stained playbook It's a sense of yearning and a lesson in desire Ah, ah There's a fence in the desert somewhere There's lines in the sea that are not to be crossed There's a woman living as a man There's medicine in the weeds Oh, and there's water on the moon There's a private rocket ship heading there soon And a symphony in the streets There's a gallon bucket band in Carnegie Hall Ooh. phone call plays slowly in my mind a clerk at a window caught you in a lie yeah i remember the crackling feeling in my heart security cameras shook me apart i had a lot to learn about where i was from i had a lot to learn about forgiveness i had a lot on my mind Maybe more of who I am will be forgotten, won't be remembered, like all the stories never told, the digital lives scattered in cold, all of the footsteps that will never be traced, the forgotten ways of an ancient race.
unplug TV Full of daytime dramas And unwritten sequels on empty screens But I take the back roads when there's time To see the old churches and their withered spires The faithful lived here a long time ago But the congregation's just down the road Gather round your steeples, gather round By the bypass where they plant the signs Two golden wishbones and cheap pickup lines Open all day, open all year Bring your pocket change and spend it here A sidewalk prayer to a glowing screen Satellites and stations up where heaven used to be A broken skyline of all its trees Cell phone towers as far as the eye can see Gather round, your steeples gather round Goodness, darling, take off that crown I want to see as you were made I want to free you from that cage Some people walk a thousand miles To find something holy or divine Got what I need, it's all right here Find my steeples, jump and cheer Gather round your steeples, gather round Gather round your steeples, gather round Watching Audio Tree Live, we have been in the studio with Ben Sully. Uh, thank you so much for being here, guys. Again, really what cool. a treat! Thanks. No, Thanks. thank you. Audio Tree. Um, if you want to find their music, you can do so at bensully.com. And if you're in the Chicagoland area, they're playing City Winery tonight at 8 p.m. before heading to St. Louis. Uh, from all of us here in the studio, thanks to the sound engineers for making us sound good. Thanks to Lights and Camera for making us look good. And thank you, the viewers, for watching, as always. Um, if you want to support, feel free to download the stream once it's available and give us a shout out on social media. Thanks so much. Have a great weekend, and bye-bye.